Hi and welcome to my new video lesson. I am Igor Smirnov, International Grandmaster and Chess Coach. Today we will be talking about one interesting opening line, which happens in Sicilian defense after the first standard moves, d4, exchange, knight f6. Here in this position, except the usual move knight c3, white can also play the fifth move f3. Well, of course I'm not saying that this f3 move is better than a usual continuation knight c3. Of course not, it's just a possible alternative. However, it has a few positive sides. The first advantage of this variation is that it's simple. In most cases you will use the only setup of the pieces and the only plan. And you will accomplish this plan despite of almost any black's moves. Of course it's very simple and convenient for you. Comparing to the main lines where white needs to know lots of force and theoretical variations. I mean the main lines of Sicilian defense after knight c3. So, from this point of view, the f3 move is much more simpler for you. Another argument for this variation is rather a psychological argument. Let's think about the black player. Probably he wanted to play a knighter variation after a6 or a dragon variation after the move g6. Therefore, this player is probably an aggressive tactical attacker player. That's why he plays these opening lines. When you play f3, you turn the game into a strategical direction, into a positional way. Actually, in one of the main lines here, the game uh, leads to an endgame stage directly. Certainly, it will be unpleasant for the black player who wanted to play an attacking chess and a sharp middle game position. This is the second argument for the move f3. Okay, and now let's come closer to chess and I'll show you all the main variations here and will explain you all the general ideas. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is the main idea behind the move f3? Here white wants to play c4, creating a well-known maratipon structure which gives white a space advantage in the center and which prevents black from making active moves like d5 or b5 later in the middle game. Also, after c4, due to your space advantage, you will have a simple and comfortable way for developing your pieces on an active squares. Ok, this is the white's main idea and actually you will do it after any black's moves. So here black can make lots of different things. He can play a6 or knight c6 or e6 or g6, queen c7 or anything else. After any passive move from the black side, you will play c4. And this already fixes your space advantage and gives you better control over the central squares. In the future, you'll have a strong square on the d5 for your knight, which will go there through the c3 square. Okay, let's say black plays something, knight c6, you will go knight c3. Your future development is quite obvious, you will play bishop e2, bishop e3, and castling. That is actually all that you need to know about this variation. Okay, I'll make this move on the board, like e6, bishop e2, bishop e7, bishop e3, and white castles, and here is the most typical position in this variation. After that you will probably place your rooks in the center and for this purpose you need to go queen d2 and then rook fd1 and rook ac1. You have a strong centralized position and a very good control over just really the whole board because it's quite difficult for black to make any active things here. So this is your general main plan which you will realize in most cases. Ok, now let's see different variations more specifically and I'll show you some specific properties of different variations and how it's better to realize the white's plan in different concrete situations. Let's start from the beginning. e4, c5, knight f3, d6 and our variation f3. If black players wanted to play the dragon variation, then probably he will play g6 or something like this. In this case, of course, your plan is still the same. You play c4, then something like bishop g7, 
knight c3, black goes knight c6. And in this position you should be careful because the black's knight on the c6 and the black's bishop from the g-zone is looking at your knight on the d4. And this creates some tactical possibilities for a discovered attack. Sometimes black can play something like knight takes e4 and then take back your knight on the d4. Of course you can stop all these ideas very easily. You can just play bishop e3 and that's what you should do in this position. Now if black takes on the d4 you will simply recapture by the bishop and everything is fine. After that everything is standard, something like this. Bishop d7, Kanslin. You have a standard middle game position. Here, as usual, you will play queen d2 and you will put your rooks on the central lines. And also here you have a strong square on the d5 for your knight. In this variation the black's pawn is on the e-zone and that's why you can certainly uh, penetrate into black's territory by playing knight d5. So someone in the future you will definitely play this move. You shouldn't hurry up because you can do it in any situation, so first you should play queen d2 and finish your centralization, finish your development. Uh, but generally, after knight d5, I will just do it right now, just to show you what could happen someone in the future. So after knight d5 and when black takes, in most cases you should recapture by the e-pawn, and this will create a backward and fixed pawn on the e-zone, which will be a simple target for your attack. After an exchange, after something like this, you will have a simple plan to doubling rooks on the e-file and putting pressure on this backward pawn on the e-zone. This plan is very simple and at the same time it's very effective. As I've already said, you shouldn't hurry up with the move knight d5, you should first finish your development and then you will play knight d5 and realize this plan. Okay, that's what you should know about the dragon variation, about the black's attempt to play a dragon variation. As you can see, if white can accomplish his main setup of the pieces, then it's quite difficult for black to make something active afterwards. That's why sometimes black tries to bother you in the early stage of game. And now we'll see one of such possibilities. E4, C5, the first moves are standard, knight f6, f3, here black can go knight c6, white certainly plays c4, and in this position black can play queen b6 right away. Uh, what is the idea? You see that black is attacking the knight on the d4 and you can't protect it by your bishop because the black's queen is also looking at the b2 pawn. So this is the black's idea, he is trying to make some troubles for you and this attack on the b2 pawn not allows white to develop his bishop normally right now or someone in the future. This is the black's idea. In fact it's not dangerous and there is a very simple way for white to oppose it. You will play knight c2, black makes any moves like e6, knight c3, bishop e7, bishop d3, Hustling. And now it seems like white has little problems, because the black's queen from b6 not allows white to make casting. And at the same time you can't play bishop e3, because black will take the b2 pawn. This was the black's idea, trying to create little problems for white. Of course it's a very little problem, because at least you can just play rook b1 here, protecting the b2 pawn and then bishop e3. That's why we can see that queen b6 is not dangerous for white at all. At the same time, white has even better option. Instead of rook b1, you can still play bishop e3 right away. In fact, black cannot take the pawn on the b2, and that's why the move queen b6 is just a wasting of time. Because here black has to retreat to go back on the c zone. And certainly it's good for white because it gives you an extra tempo for development. Anyway, let's see what if black takes this pawn. After that, black is taking the knight on the c3. You certainly need to protect it. You will play queen d2. And now you can see that the queen on the b2 is trapped. It has no way back because all the squares are under the control of the white's minor pieces. 
That's why on the next move, White is going to play Rook B1. Sorry, Rook B1. And to win the Black's Queen. It's actually very difficult for Black to uh, survive here somehow. The only idea is to go Knight B4. Because from the b4, the knight is attacking the knight on the c2 and the bishop on the d3. Nevertheless, in this variation, white is still winning. In the same way, you will play rook b1. The only move for black is knight takes c2. Bishop takes. The only square for the queen is on the a3. You go knight b5, taking the queen again. Uh, now black can't go back because after queen a6. You can play knight c7, forking the black's queen and the rook. So this is impossible. The only way is to take the pawn on the a2, but in this case, white has a tactical way to win the game. You can play e5, and that's double attack because you attack the knight on the f6 directly and the queen on the a2 indirectly because you're preparing a discovered attack. Bishop takes h7, winning the queen then. Queen takes a2. Black can't save both of his pieces, and White will take either the queen or the knight, getting a winning position. For example, after d takes c5, bishop takes h7, and then taking the queen. So we can see that the Black's attempt to play queen b6 is quite useless. White has lots of ways how to finish development without any problems, and we can see that, in fact, the move queen b6 even not allowing black to take the pawn on the b2, because it's losing due to this force variation. Now I'll show you another active black's attempt and how you should react. So the first moves are standard, c takes, knight f6, f3, and here black can try to play e6 and to play d5 quickly, undermining your center and getting more space for his pieces. White certainly plays c4 as usual. And now you can see that the black's move d5 right away is not so much favorable for black. Because after d5 you had a standard way to react on this move. You should take c takes, e takes and then you can push e5. This gives you a few stable positional advantages, because black has an isolated pawn on the d5, which is already blockaded by your strong knight on the d4. You have a space advantage in the center due to your pawn on the e5, and in the middle game you can support it by your f pawn, you can push f4, f5 and so on, develop an attack in the center and on the king side. And right now black has to retreat by his knight to go back, and certainly it's good for you. That's why the black's move d5 doesn't work straight away. Black should prepare it better. Let's say black plays bishop e7, knight c3, castling, bishop e2 or bishop e3, and now knight c6. You see that black has to go knight c6, because otherwise, after d5, you will always realize your typical reaction c takes, followed by e5 move. That's why black needs to go knight c6. From the c6 square, this knight is controlling the e5, not allowing white to push e5 after an exchange. And that's why black should play it. In this position, white has two good options. The first way to prevent black from playing d5 is to retreat knight c2. Now your queen is controlling the d5 square as well, and that's why if black plays d5, you will simply win the pawn there. This is the one possible way. After that, white will certainly continue the usual development. Bishop e2, castling, and so on. Except this option, white can simply continue his development and ignore the black's plan. He can just play bishop e2, and this is normal as well. After the black's move d5, he will take, e takes, now you take on the c6, b takes, you take on the d5. And this is the white's idea. You want to create an isolated pawn on the d5 for black, which will be a simple target for your attack in the middle game or in an end game. Black can take by the pawn right now, then you'll just make castling, or black can take by the knight. It doesn't change something really. You will take, and after recapture, white castles. 
Of course, this position is about equal, but nevertheless, white has slightly better position and slightly better chances. Uh, black has a weak pawn on the d5, and you can easily put your heavy pieces on the d file, putting pressure on this pawn. Also, you can very easily blockade this pawn by your bishop from the d4 square. Your bishop will be very active there. Also, black has a little bit weak pawn on the a7, which will be a stable problem for black during the whole game, especially in an endgame stage, certainly. And also, you have a pawn majority on the queen side and a potential distant passed pawn there, which will become noticeable in an endgame stage. That's why endgame is quite favor favorable for white here. But first, as well as usual, you need to continue your development, you need to play queen d2, place your rooks on the central files, and maybe to play bishop d4, putting all your pieces on the best squares. And this gives you a slightly better position and a lasting initiative. So this is about this variation with the black smooth e6. You see that you have two good ways. Uh, first you can go knight c2 and not allow black to go d5. Secondly, you can just ignore his plan and get this quite favorable, favorable position for you. Though we analyzed quite a lot of different variations, in fact you can see that the white's plan is always the same. White plays c4, gaining space in the center and preventing black from playing pawn moves d5 and b5. And after that you play knight c3, bishop e2, bishop e3 and castling. Black has a few attempts trying to bother white somehow, but they don't work. Okay, also here black has the aggressive move e5. This is actually the main line of this variation. But I don't want to make this lesson too long, so let's finish for now. And in the second part of this video lesson, we will analyze this central line of this variation, the black's move e5. Thanks for your attention. You're welcome to leave your comments on my blog. It'll be nice to see your opinion. And please don't forget to check your email, because soon I'll send you the second part of this lesson. Again, thanks for your attention, and talk to you soon.